Hey everyone, today we have a Pia from uh, Herodotus and we will talk about storage proofs in Ethereum ecosystem and uh, fast off-chain infrastructure within it. So yeah, we can speak. Uh, hello, so can I start now? Yeah, yeah of course. Okay, today the topic is like dive into the storage proof. Like, I'm not sure like how many of you guys are familiar with it. So I just start from like scratch. It's like, um, start from the normies, like what is the storage proof and why should we even care about it? And for some more technical details, like I'll explain like, so what is actually storage proof in terms of like technical details and basically that i made a small project like about a full storage proof workflow and we'll go we'll just go over by code and one by one so yeah so let's start from what is storage proof and why we even care about the blockchain and basically like blockchain is you can easily say different types of um database like you, you you're getting the data from like from the you have experienced probably experienced about getting the data from the db which is like very stable and comfortable and very easy to like access any historical terms or like like wherever you located on your db table but to be honest like nowadays the blockchain have some um, downside in terms of getting the on-chain data like which which is we just want to get any location like from n2 like which means like we don't want we don't want to care about the with the data location at all while we, we are trying to utilize the data and also we just want to get some data at any historical time like i'll, I'll explain it, everything is like in the next slide and also at the same time, we just want to get everything in trustless way. So yeah, let's go over one by one. What does it mean like from and to any location? Which means like this is basically the DB structure. Like you don't care about whether the data is in this part or this part or this table or this table. You don't care about it at all. You're just getting the data from um from the from the database, right? And nowadays like because Ethereum's are become more scalable, like solutions, like L2s, there is a lot of L2s on top of the Ethereum L1, which is a bit tricky to get the data, like without considering the location. Which means, like, the data stored inside the Starknet, you can only access on the Starknet. The data stored in Arbitrum, you can only access on Arbitrum, like. I mean, you can go through the Ethereum like to get the state itself, but um, yeah, it's not that very easy access compared to the original DB. Um, yeah, and second, any historical time, like you know that the blockchain have only you can get the latest state of of the contract. Like blockchain is basically the multiple blocks are com um like chained and every time that you make the state update they just update the state and then whenever you call the unchained data directly from the smart contract then you can get the latest state only through your contract right um so this means like although you want to get the data from block number n if the latest state is block number n plus one then basically you cannot get it in fully on chain way of this makes sense and third we just want to make sure all of this data to be in trustless way which means we can actually achieve this and this in like other methods like rpc providers or like oracles other on chain data providers but basically the, how they works is they just store every data inside their centralized DB and then the developer should trust them. So 
yeah, basically the storage proof is uh, we thought storage proof is the latest um, solution to solve this on-chain data to deliver in this three way. Yeah, and let's talk about more technical details like what um, what's actually inside the block is yeah something like this. Um, you can see that there's some like roots inside, and these roots actually actually represent each of the tree. The tree I'll go over like next slide. But basically, what you can um, what you can get the um, graph from this from this photo is like every block contains of multiple roots and this roots is somehow representing the tree of some multiple nodes um, which means this is basically how the ethereum is storing the data inside their blockchain and it's very important important to understand this because storage proof is basically um, based on how Ethereum stores the data inside their chain. We we compared this cryptographic commitments. I'll explain later slide. And to get the valid data without any uh, third party. So yeah, this. So just one by one. I get the one Merkle tree, which is like exactly is like a um yeah, it's like a, if you have a like value A B C D, then the first leaf node will be hash of this value, and then the the parents parents will be hash of these two values, and then um and then so on, and then at the end of the day, you get one hash that contains every values hash at the end and then we call this as in root of this tree this is like not exactly same as how the ethereum tree looks like because it's like marco patricia tree so it's like a little bit different but basically the the proof itself is working same so what does it mean by proof is let's say you want to at the end of the day you want to get the the data a and all you know is you just have a um, root in your like smart contract in trustless way how you how you're gonna retrieve this a is actually proven how you're gonna retrieve this a without um trusting anybody like the there's a solution for this which is called like merkle proof basically it's like you just get the pass what does it mean by pass is like this node and ah, if you want to retrieve the a then basically the pass is contains of this hash b and hash c and d and which means that if you hash this a um and you get the every elements of this path and then you follow it follow it means like you just hash it and hash it then you can retrieve the um this hash of the hash a b and hash of the hash a b a, c d and this is basically the retrieved root from your nodes right and you just need to compare the root that you already already caught as valid so this is the basically like core design of the how the merkle proof and how we verify for to retrieve the valid a and this is the kind of like a core technical detail in storage proof because we just mentioned about how the ethereum stores the data inside their um inside their blockchain and basically this blockchain is contains of multiple trees and these trees are have a trait of this um, Merkle proof which you can validate certain data that you want to validate and you can adjust to this trait into 
any kind of tree that you want to retrieve. Like if you want to get the nodes, balance, like storage, like storage root, like storage root is also like another tree that you can retrieve the values. This is like a bit complicated, but um, so TLDR, in Ethereum, they store the data inside this kind of like tree structure. And because tree structure have the, the trait of retrieving the data in valid way using Merkle proof. And because of that, you can able to get the desired data in trusted way, like for example, of account states or like store states. Um, and yeah, account states contain some like familiar concepts like nose balance. And this storage root is uh, basically another root of this tree. So yeah, this concept is a bit difficult to understand with the just explanations. So that's why I decided to make a like simple project that can explain this like all in detail by the code. Um, and if you are interested in like how does these trees are actually composed in some um, contract, then you can check out the EVM storage, like which like you can go through the storage part. And this one have a like slot and value, which is basically key and value. And uh, this is the the one that I mentioned about this key and value and this construct in terms of like tree structure. So um, yeah, um, yeah. And then as you can see that. The most important thing is like we need a valid root compare. Like compare means like verify. Like I just mentioned about verification. Like as we construct the root and then we compare with the valid root and then we compare that if it's same or not. If it's same, that then it means that the original value that we want to retrieve is also considered as valid. And this is this whole process is called like we are verifying in the Merkle tree. So yeah, so all of this as assumption is a cons the, the important part is we need a proven root. And in this case, as I explained, all of these roots are com composed with block header. And if you hash this block header, that is a block hash we were saying. So basically, if you have a proven block header, like proven block hash, then you can retrieve all of the data inside in here, like states tree, like receipt tree, like transaction tree, which contains like account states and transactions, like everything. So this is kind of like a power of storage proof that you can retrieve the any kind of data exist inside the blockchain in fully trustless way, which is fully trustless as in like verifying the data in this kind of um, operation. So I'm not go into detail of of the how to retrieve the block header in historical way. Um, I will also post the log link at the end. So this, um, yeah, that one will contain about this part. Yeah, so so TLDR in, in leveraging the storage proof, you can you can actually deliver the on-chain data from any location because all you need to get all you need to do is just you need to get the root for the to retrieve all of those data and any historical time because you need to if you can actually have a way of getting all of the historical block headers in fully trusted way, then that means you can retrieve the any state of that historical moment. And that means we can retrieve any historical time data in trusted way. Uh, so this is the um, power of the storage proof. And yeah, just I just want to show you that this mini storage proof projects 
contains all of these explanations that I just did um, using the diagrams with the code. So. Um, yeah, and uh, as an addition, I really recommend to read the blog that yeah that basically you you provided. It's quite deep and understandable. Uh yeah, thank you. Um, so so this is the project that I did in terms of basically all of the operations like comparing. And verifying and retrieving the the value in on chain in trustless way is written in the contract. I made a two contract, which is EVM uh, with Solidity and then Starknet with Cairo. And all of the details are like written in this readme. But uh, let me just go through quick about how does it actually works step by step. So if I run this code, like I'm now running the off-chain off -chain part, I made some, uh, yeah, here's the off-chain part. We need the off-chain part basically because like we need to, okay, just, uh, I will explain like, from the contract side. So first of all, we need to access the valid block cache, which I mentioned about it, because from the block cache, you can validate the block header, and block header contains multiple roots of the um, Merkle Patricia tree of the Ethereum, which stores the data that you might be interested in. So very first step, you need to access the actually um, valid block cache. And the most valid way is to access the block cache through the Cisco, like the through the upload. And using this function, native function, like you can access the block cache. And but this block cache only can retrieve um, older than like older than 256 block compared to the latest block because ethereum can like okay i'll 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 skip this part because this basically um this basically like explaining about this like your you can retrieve the valid block header, historical block header by uh, going through the um, block header and like a train because the, every blockchain is like commitment of the previous block header. So, so let's just assume in this project, we are getting a, blo a valid block cache. And second of all, we are accessing the, the valid block header, which we are provided as the input as a bytes type and this block header is you can retrieve from off chain and uh i use this i made this function like encoded block header so that i can print out the uh, block header by using the uh, ethers rs library to call the yeah, RPC call basically. So using this, you can able to get the the EVM like block header fully, which is RP encoded version. And you just need to pass the data inside this uh inside this. So let me just show you to get after get this block header. You can pass the bytes to here, and the block number is here. Oh, this. Yeah, so what does it mean by that is this block number um, does this block header that I provided through the RPC call 
is actually valid or not. So it's like return value true means after I go through here, I first retrieve the block cache through the step one, which is we already know that this block cache is valid. And then I catch up cache this RP encoded block header that I retrieve from um, Rust, uh, the RPC call. And then I just compare it. And compare means verify it. So yeah, now now we now we able to get the valid block header through this step. So in the third step, we just uh, first check the get block header, which is like step two. So after pass this um, block header part, we now know that block header is valid. And then this block header is initially RLP encoded version. So we retrieve um, the desired root that we want to get through the RLP decoded uh, library. Um, get state root, get received root, get transaction root. You can all done by same because um, each of the roots are like certain order exists in a certain order of this RP encoded block header and then uh, I just retrieve the root. So let's give an example on the state root. I'll just pass the block header and then long number here. And then after passing this, basically we now know that, oh, this state root that I retrieved through this logic is actually valid. So now we actually get the valid state root, which is, if you remember this, this step, um, now we actually get the valid state root means we now know the valid root of this Merkle tree. So that means we can actually get the desired, like the, uh, the any kind of account state that we want to retrieve in very trustless way using this valid state root. Uh, yeah, so the next step is how we will actually get the valid account that we want to get. So in this part, we need to you need to pass the block number, block header. Um, this step is necessary because of the getting the valid state root, and this function is like calling the previous step. So like, and to to verify it, this is the step that I mentioned about comparing the Merkle proof to get the um, proven data. And you first need to get the key for the account node that you want to retrieve because uh, this key is basically, in this example, will be the hash A. And this, this um, a country proof is basically the thing that I mentioned as elements of hash B and hash C and D, which is the elements that can compose the valid root with the key. So this, this process is called verifying the Merkle proof. And after, after verifying the Merkle proof with the key and the key and the proof, like passing this, then we can retrieve the value, like valid value. And then this value is RP encoded one. So I just decode into using the RP library. And you can now get the valid nonce account balance and storage root and code hash from it. So get from the, the contract, you can try Let's try same one, like block header and block number. And beside this, I actually made, like construct the, the proof, account proof using the um, 
Aethers RS RPC call. And this function is here. Yeah, so like, I mean, in my case, I give an example of like my account, but like you can change into yours. And this is the account that account information that I want to retrieve. And I pass the like blog number that I get and then account that I want to retrieve as in like valid value. And if you go here, I call the get proof method of the RPC call. And this retrieves like EIP like 11886 proof response, which is printed out here. And because of the Solidity contract, I need to pass this whole like arrays of bytes into um, bytes um, type, data type. So I construct this and construct this bytes, like concat it with some like tricks. Uh, where is the concat? Yeah, with some tricks like and RLP encoded, hex it. Um, and then I return it because that that's the value that I need to use it for passing this uh, value. So yeah, let's let's just see how what it happens. Like account, this is the key for the store uh, for the state tree and account tree proof that I concat it is this and. Uh, Thing like if you have a white space, like it doesn't work as I remember. Yeah, and after passing this, uh, this logic, this, this solidity, yeah, this retrieving the account state logic. Now we can able to get valid nonce and account balance and codash and storage root of this account. So basically, these informations are like fully valid even though we first get the proof and header from the RPC call. We we did a Merkle tree verification and then we know that these values are actually valid through this process. And then we get the actually valid um, account information. Um, yeah, so this is the how you can get the account value. And last step is finally storage proof. So if you remember this storage root, this is basically the the tree of the storage. This is the storage tree. And this this root is the root that you retrieved from the account state. So Let's try for, um, yeah. Let's try for this one that I give it as an example. So if I go here, I did exactly same thing with the another account to show you the the actual storage value, and this is the account of Gorilla like USDC um, contract address, which. In the storage slot two, you can retrieve the the value of uh, of the data, and and I pass the uh, yeah, and I and this time I pass the pass this as an account in the storage slot for this uh, get storage proof. And uh, this is also like get proof method, but before I just put the location into zero because I don't care about the like storage um, location. But this time I put as in specific slot. Specific slot means the key of this um, storage, storage nodes, um, storage nodes and and then I can retrieve the um, retrieve the value, but with different storage proof um, data inside. 
which this meaning is hey i i get the account information in here and then inside there's a storage hash which is a root of the tree and inside i want want to get the proof of this specific key and this specific key has this value and inside the storage tree the proof for this uh this node is basically construct with this one so let's go through the storage proof finally which is if you pass this and the slot is uh cool and the root is the storage hash and then yeah you can get the value like four five eight like c which is if you see this if you get the value like this but this is a um decimal type so if you transfer a uh, trend yeah if you convert the decimal to hexadecimal, you can see the 458C, which is same as this one that you retrieved from on-chain, which is, uh, yeah, you, you get the storage key and then pass it to the Merkle Patricia tree with the proof, with the root and the key, and you get the value that is RP encoded version. So this value is exactly the same as uh, the one that we retrieve from the RPC. But this whole process is we do it because we just don't want to trust the RPC directly. And also by doing this, like imagine that you do this whole process, like getting the block cache in different chain, but you are doing this verifications and you're doing this operations in um that origin chain specifically then basically you can retrieve the data in like any other different chains like like you can compute the um optimism block cache on the starnet using the um using the same storage proof verification method and so on using the this mpt data structure and then you can retrieve the valid optimism data on the starnet like uh yeah so thank you for listening i think this is almost all and i explained this whole process on the uh blog as well so yeah thank you so much it was so cool um i just have a couple of question like personal one um the first is that, as you mentioned uh, also in your repository, that you have Rust uh, infrastructure, right, off-chain. So I want to know your opinion on Rust in common in the blockchain industry. And what do you think it's about its future, you know, how it will progress and what do you think the, m the main benefits of this language is? I think I like Rust. Like I, I like coding with Rust because, first of all, like in blockchain industry, there's a lot of infrastructure side of libraries written and support with Rust. Like for example, this like Ethers RS, which is like now transferred with the Alloy .rs, um uh, which is pretty like solid and cool library that supports like many features on the blockchain and, um. And I mean, the language itself is very CPU bound, like a very specific, like very, it has a very high performance, especially with the CPU bounded task. So, especially like the storage proof thing that you need to compute the Merkle proof and verify it. Because in Herodotus, like we do all this step we do it on on chain but also we do it on off chain also and during doing the off chain side we have we switch to the rust language recently and because computing the proof and verify it 
caused a lot of like CPU it is like CPU bonded task, so it reduces the latency a lot. So, uh, yeah. What What's your personal vision on the data layers and data infrastructure within the Ethereum ecosystem? What the main goals and how it will evolve through the time? Like I know, uh, the next two years. Uh, like the infrastructure in general, or like Rust. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, data infrastructure around the Ethereum ecosystem, because okay. I see ma many different, you know, use cases for improving the and uh, many different approach. Also, EIP four eight four four, right? The data yeah. sharding. So, what do you think about that? And how it will evolve, in your opinion? Uh, yeah, I mean, like it is, it it is improving. Like recently, like Vitalik posted about uh the roadmap about some many stuff, and right now, like, like except for the Ethereum, like, um, there's a lot of discussions around like parallel parallel EVMs and um to you know like talk about like performance is important or like. Um, researching about the protocol designs are important. Like, yeah, I saw many, many tweets about the paralyzed, uh, as you said, right? It's it's quite interesting. What do you can what do you can say on that? Also, I mean, I, I'm not the experts about around this topic, so I would just say that I like to see how this like um libraries or like more better libraries are coming out like for example like before it was like there's rs right now like uh people like the similar people are working on LOIS and it supports like more like better interfaces and some nice you can see like uh i mean they 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 refactored the the libraries a lot so I would look forward to using this, and um, I also had a like experience about like Darknet related Rust libraries, and yeah, I'm just I think it's it's good to see that the libraries are evolving, and then um, Rust makes it easy to write about the infrastructure side. Yeah, I think. Yeah, and also I saw in your Twitter that you said that you were in the blockchain industry like for three years, right? And the uh, first question is how you come up to the to the position where you're at. And the second one is that uh, maybe you have some resources where, you know, people can read uh, exact, you know, your blog or where people can a bit uh, educate on that topic also. Uh. Uh, first of all, like I think I got into the blockchain industry, like actual blockchain industry in this year, probably, like really into it. And uh, second of all, I think uh, I was did a lot of like hackathons, and um, and then I was like interested in like cross chains or like some new new trends like at the time like while exploring with hackathons and i just shared what i built on the twitter and that brings me to the the company like doing very interesting stuff like herodotus and yeah after that i i got to know this kind of like all of the knowledges and start to uh, contribute more on other open source projects. Like, I but what's your like background before? What uh, before in this? Because as I understand, you are a programmer from uh, day one, right? <laughs> no, I was like, I think like I started to program like two years or three years before, like, and. Uh, I started with the front end developer and then I just find the blockchain industry like very interested and then I very first time like I tried to build some DAOs like not doing pro, pro programmings or like developer 
I was like building some school blockchain clubs and um, like trying to build a like DAO communities. And then like turn out I am more interested in like how actually techs are changing in this industry more. So I jump onto the technical side more and I decided to like go on a hackathons like to to develop the technical side and to interact with the people like who actually more into the tech in this industry and yeah this this is the flow i guess yeah very cool yeah and the last one as i mentioned what the resources or materials or i don't know content that you can recommend to watch about that topic i think like end of the this vlog i'm i put the references and basically like this first two reference is the the reference that i referred in the the code side and then if you want to like actually interested in like story proof i would like highly means about like looking at the herodotus github and then and then second of all, there's a lot of like, articles related to the story proof that um, like Starkware's um, to compare the story proof with oracles and like how does basically this, this blog, this post is handling about how we actually get the historical uh, blog cache that I said I want to like, skip it for now. Because uh, we can just get the block cache from Opcoat in this simple project, and yeah, and based on the each chain, they construct with the different state design, like the the tree design. Like for example, like Starknet is using the the Peterson and Poseidon hash, while Ethereum is using the Kacha cache, and the key and values like how they're storing, so are different, and would be nice to check out like. Uh, different chains are implemented in different state design, and and basically this state design is highly impact to how we can retrieve the valid data through storage proof technology. Okay, thank you. Uh, it was awesome. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for every. Thank you everyone who joined us and who will watch this recording.